There are legends from times long past when the world was united by an alliance between dragon and man. Though the order held strong for centuries, it was destroyed by the Dark Union. The dragons of the order withdrew into timeless slumber. It was then that the warrior Rin discovered the resting place of the dragon Erok. Together they drove back the forces of the Dark Union. Little did they know, their struggles had only just begun. The dragon, it's returned! The Desert Lords have enslaved my own people. We can call the dragons back to our world. But we cannot do it ourselves. I cannot wait. The call must be answered. But those are just legends. We will deal with the woman. Well, the story takes off from Draken 1 where um, Rin and Eric just got through a large battle with the Dark Union. And uh, it starts out, Rin's brother's been killed. So Rin is at her village. She's burying her villagers, kind of saying a final goodbye. It is the grand summons of the Order. The Order? I must answer it, Rin. And then Arok receives a Grand Order of the Flame summons where he is requested to go aid the city of Serdana, which is the last bastion of the good people. And they're at war with the Desert Lords. A Desert Lord! It turns out there's another force of the Dark Union, which are called the Desert Lords, and they've come back and are starting to terrorize the world of Draken again. Oh! Your main goal is to open the four gates of the Order, and there are these magical portals that allow people to teleport a long distance, so it connects sort of civilized locations. You don't really know what they are at first, but they are a key to awakening all of the dragons of the Order, which are dormant, just like Erok was. Your real goal is to be getting through these lands and to be opening these gates in hopes of raising Malashe, who is sort of the mother of all dragons and she can resurrect all the dragons of the Order to take on and defeat Jassad, who's the main bad guy. Only a dragon of the Order can open the ancient gates, so Erok is the one who must open these gates and save the world. In those ancient times, the dragons took on fantastic shapes and sizes, each differing from one another. We wanted to create um, dragon races or dragon types that just weren't your stereotypical dragons. Um, we wanted to place a, a dragon in a world and say, what would it look like if it evolved in that area? So we have different types. Pro dragons, there's a standard form and an ice version which shoots a, a seeking ice blast. Then we have bat dragons. Dragons that dwell on cliff sides, so they look more like birds and they perch. Arok is more of your classic dragon. We wanted people to be able to recognize him as a you know, real powerful, classic dragon that he is. He's one of the dragons of the Order, which are a series of very magical, old dragons which have a lot of abilities. They're very intelligent. It's time we left this place. Nothing but ghosts remain here now. Arok is your partner in the game. The Knight of the Order of the Flame is bound spiritually with the dragon, so when the dragon feels pain, the knight feels pain as well. So if one dies, the other one dies, and that's how they kind of get their uh, beyond human strength. But then Arok also has his own sort of AI. When he is left to his own devices, he will fly around, he'll defend himself, he'll defend you, so if someone starts attacking you, he'll shoot his fireballs. I gotcha! Dragons command both land and sky, and you shall have to learn to do the same. One of the things we wanted to do with the controls is to make it as seamless as possible between Rin and Arok, because that's obviously the biggest challenge. You're running around on the ground. Game mechanic is somewhat different than when you're flying. First and foremost, for the control scheme, we wanted it to be easy, but also 
be involved enough that people who play the game more will get more involved with the controls and use them more in a kind of an expert mode. You can lock on and engage a character and then use the more of the expert D-pad controls to pull off maneuvers that you wouldn't be able to do just using the analog stick. The journey will contain great adventures, it's true, but you must also learn and grow if you hope to be victorious. The skill system is, uh, I would say, a role-playing game light. You have the ability, after you kill creatures, to get experience, very much like a traditional role-playing game. Uh, as you gain experience, eventually you go up a level. Once you go up a level, you get a skill point that you can apply to either her melee skill, her projectile combat skill, or her magic skill. Melee attacks range from things like short swords to axes to long swords to magical swords that have different abilities. If you choose to do the projectile attack, you can go into bow mode and you can just do a standard sort of rapid fire bow or you can go into sniper mode which brings you into first person mode where you have a reticle and you can target people from a distance. We used something before with magic where it was um, attached to an item, but we wanted Rin to actually learn how to do magic. So we've got a really nice spell system where you actually, as the player, learn how to create shapes in air to generate the power. And you will learn that as you go through the game. You'll pick up skills from other people, so that's an interaction that you get. There's 16 different spells, each with three different levels. So if you specialize in magic, you can get more powerful spells that are really devastating. So the first level of fireball, you shoot and only does 10 points of damage or something like that. Small explosion. If you power that up to level three and you throw a fireball, it creates a huge blast radius where you're taking out multiple creatures at once. So it really does pay to specialize for Rin. Become wise in the ways of both magic and combat because your foes are perilous and legion. We have a large range of enemies in this game. We brought back some old favorites from Draken 1, which uh, we call them Hugues, uh, which are orcs, or these little sort of comical creatures that are you know, about half the height of Rin, but they're kind of stocky and buff, and uh, they do lots of rolls and things like that. And then one of my favorite creatures is the primitive giant, Yeti, which is these massive 40 foot tall giants that kind of lumber around the ground. And their attack is they'll pick up anything off the ground that they can throw and huck it at you. Um, and or if you're close enough, they'll pick you up and throw you across the world. Uh, one of the coolest enemies is a two-headed sea beast kind of thing. He's so large that you end up sort of weaving in and out of his heads as he shoots these flying magical bolts, and you have to attack his head when he's most vulnerable. He's just so huge that it's kind of unusual. So there's a very wide array of enemies in this game. I think we have something like 35 unique enemy NPCs in the game. <laughs> and Era got back in a brand new adventure. Travel across many different lands, build your combat and magic skills, take control of Era to rule the skies and save Draken.